I'd like to call the Tuesday, February 18th, 2020, Papillion City Council meeting to order. Mrs. Brown, would you please take the roll? Sunday. Here. Mumgard. Here. Gaines. Here. Glover. Here. Jaworski. Here. Kluke. Here. Stubbe. Here. Engberg. We have some young ladies with us from uh, Scout Troop. I'd like to invite them up to lead us in the pledge. Come on. Scout salute. Those not in uniform, please place your right hand over your heart. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. Ms. Kluke, would you like to share a little bit about the uniqueness of this troop? I do want to share a little bit. Thank you for the opportunity, Mayor. Mayor and Councilman, I'd like to introduce you to BSA Scout Troop 461G. What makes this so unique is that Boy Scouts of America has, in February of 2019, welcomed girls into the troop level. This troop officially started in February of 2019 and had five girls. They were the first one in Papillion, and they were one of only three in the Mid-America Council. So we are quite proud of this group. And not only that, but at this point, they are 17 girls strong a year later, and we will be over 21 girls strong within the next month, and our numbers continue to grow. It's a significant opportunity, as the BSA program has a lot of merit badges that they work on, it has a lot of rank advancements. We're indoors, we're outdoors. We work on um, physical fitness, we work on financial, we work on cooking, we work on everything with both the B and the G troop. And all of it is to create good citizenship and to create leaders of tomorrow. So we are very excited to introduce you to the first BSA troop girls at 461. So thank you for welcoming us tonight. Councilwoman Kluke actually provides leadership for that group, so thank you. Uh, we have two presentations tonight. I'd like to invite uh, Camry Miranda up. Camry. She's with the uh, Mayor's Youth Council. Probably seen her around quite a bit. Um, actually, the first thing I want to do is give her an award. Um, she actually received an award from Serve Nebraska, which is a statewide leadership group, and I want to congratulate her for that. It's a Nebraska Volunteer Service Commission is the one that awards that, and they gave her an award for youth uh, volunteer leadership. She's president of the Mayor's Youth Council, and that group, as you know, has been heavily involved in a lot of civic activities. Um, they plan an event on Papillion Days relevant to the youth. Uh, Mayor's Youth Council has been in front of the council many times, giving the youth perspective on issues we're dealing with. And I actually can think of a couple of times where their testimony to the council probably changed or influenced what the council was doing. So they have a very important role. Um, they also do a lot of civic service. They've got a couple of roads they sponsor for trash pickup and some other things like that. And um, she's done a great job leading the group. Um, I want to read the letter that came from Serve Nebraska along with her certificate. Just says, greetings. In honor of your voluntary service, the governor has signed the enclosed Serve Nebraska certificate. We sincerely thank you for your dedication to volunteerism. It is very impressive and heartwarming that you, along with so many other Nebraskans, give of their time and energy to fortify our communities, thereby making us all Nebraska strong. Volunteers helping their neighbors is part of the American spirit and is the backbone of our great state. Nebraskans do not give hollow promises. They roll up their sleeves and serve their neighbors in need, proving once again that's truly no place like Nebraska. And then it's uh, Serve Nebraska recognizes Camry Miranda. Uh, 2019 Serve Nebraska Step Forward Awards for Youth Volunteer Leadership for de demonstrating leadership, innovation, and hard work and service to others in the state of Nebraska. Governor Pete Ricketts. Congratulations. Thank you. And the Youth Council actually has an award that they want to give, so we'll have her do that presentation. And uh, I don't believe Dick's here, but Jennifer, I think, is. Want to come on up? 
and we'll have Camry do the presentation. Thank you for having me, everybody. Um, so we can get right to it. <laughs> um, in August of 2019, we held our annual car wash for Papillion Mayor's Youth Leadership Council. This car wash helps raise funds to support the Youth Council and expand our impact on the community. We were given the opportunity to hold the event at Firestone Auto in Shadow Lake. There we met Dick Bosset and his fabulous crew who provided great service. They supplied us with great fried chicken and more delicious food, business, and we had a great time. The money raised went to several youth council events like Halloween Safe Night, Baseball Halloween, and the Holiday Luncheon for the Foundation. With his support, we were able to fund future events for the council and will continue to get our name out to the Papillion community. We look forward to receiving his support in the future and are able to use his support for any future opportunities the council is given. We would love to thank you for supporting the Youth Council and the Youth of Papillion. On behalf of the council and me, we would love to present Dick Bosset and the Firestone Auto with this award. Thank you. He is out of town, so I'm accepting it for him. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you both. Ms. Myers, Administrator's Report, please. Thank you, Mayor. I just have a couple quick things. Um, several of you expressed an interest in reviewing the current fireworks ordinance, so I talked with Mayor Black about that, and we're suggesting that that would go to an F&A committee for discussion. So I think you have new committee assignments in front of you, so those that are on the F&A committee, please look forward to a meeting. We'll get that scheduled in the next 30 to 60 days. Also, I've attended several wastewater agency meetings <clears throat> Excuse me. over the last two weeks. We are still sorting through the options to provide sewer service south of the ridge line. And then lastly, just a quick reminder that several staff members will be attending the League Midwinter Conference next week. So that's the end of my report. Thank you very much. Um, Songshore Administrator's report too, if people weren't aware, uh, Phil Green is in the audience with us. So for people that have not met Phil or were not at the last meeting, uh, the last city council meeting, Phil was uh, approved by the city council as the city's next deputy city engineer. And I think you start March 2nd, I believe. So thanks for taking your time to be here with us. Next is the consent agenda. Do we have motion to approve? Motion, motion by Councilman Jaworski. Second by Councilman Sunday. Do we have any proponents? Do we have any opponents? Any council discussion? Please vote. Seven yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Next is item D1, Ordinance 1860, an ordinance to amend Section 20511 of Article 2 and Section 20518 of Article 34. Both of Chapter 205, the Papillion Zoning Ordinance having to do with fences. The applicant is the City of Papillion Fence Regulations Ordinance Amendment. Is there a council member that will introduce? Introduce. Introduced by Councilwoman Klug. Item D2, Ordinance 1870, an ordinance to amend Papillion Municipal Code Section 14615 to generally prohibit the parking of mobile vendors on Washington Street between 1st and 2nd Street to prohibit sales where customers would have to stand in a street and to provide for an effective date. Is there a council member that will introduce? Introduced by Councilman Sunday. Item D3, Ordinance 1871, an ordinance to amend Papillion Code Chapter 190 by adding a new Article 6 entitled Truck Routes to provide for the designation of truck routes upon which trucks must be operated subject to certain exemptions and to provide for an effective date. Sir Councilman, let them introduce. Introduced by Councilman Gaines. Item E1, Ordinance 1867, an ordinance to amend Section 20511 of Article 2, Development Definitions, Section 20518 of Article 2, Use Types, and Table 20538 of Article 4, Zoning District Regulations, all of Chapter 205, the Papillion Municipal Code, having to do with alternate energy production services, solar energy systems, and utilities. The applicants, the City of Papillion. This is a public hearing. Do we have any proponents? Do you have any opponents? I'll close the public hearing. Item E2, Ordinance 1868, an ordinance to approve an amendment to the 2019-2020 fiscal budget. Uh, again, a public hearing. Do we have any proponents? Do we have any opponents? Close the public hearing. 
Item E3, Ordinance 1869, an ordinance to amend Papillion Municipal Code 4613 entitled Rules of Conduct regarding motions and voting in council meetings introduced by Councilman Mumgard. This is a public hearing. Do we have any proponents? Any opponents? Close the public hearing. Item F1, Ordinance 1861, an ordinance to amend Section 205-279 of Article 39, Non-Conforming Development of Chapter 205 of the Papillion Municipal Code having to do with non-conforming uses. Is there a motion to approve Ordinance 1861? Motion. motion by Councilman Stubbe. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Jaworski. Any council discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Seven years, zero nays. Motion passes. Item F2, Ordinance 1866, an ordinance to amend Chapter 81 of the Papillion Municipal Code entitled Alcoholic Beverages by adding new sections numbered 8121 through 8130 regarding entertainment districts. Is there a motion to approve Ordinance 1866? Motion. motion by Councilman Jaworski. Second by Councilman Mumgard. Any council discussion? Mr. Sunday. I saw it in uh, section 81-24, subparagraph B2, that there's to be notice to neighbors of a proposed entertainment district if the district is not separated by a public street. Uh, perhaps we should look at maybe amending that to some common distance, because whether there's a street or not, uh, doesn't matter to the people on the other side if, if they're getting drowned out by the noise. And I think we owe the citizens notice regardless of whether there's, I mean the citizens in that immediate area, regardless of whether they're separated by a street or not. Um, for, the, for the full council, can you give that reference again? Was it 8124A2? 8124B2. B2, okay, thank you. Any other council discussion? Mr. Mumgarden. Well, I oh, guess. Uh, Mr. Sunday, I'm sorry. Were you done, Mr. Sunday? Oh, sorry. Thank you. Mr. Mumgarden. You know, I'm not against that idea, but I, I would prefer that we just go ahead and adopt this ordinance and deal with uh, that situation when and if it comes up. Um, can be easily handled <clears throat> by just a request that additional information go out, or we amend the ordinance at that time. Uh, my preference would be, well, let's just ad adopt it now see what problems might uh, might come up and um, then change it if necessary at that point so any other council discussion just procedurally um, want to be fair um, after council discussion the next item is a vote um, you didn't mention the potential to amend so if there is going to be an amendment uh, prior to vote this would be the appropriate time there's nobody else in the discussion queue well, I guess I would be interested in anyone else's opinion uh, as to what an appropriate distance might be uh, for for an amendment because I would like to make an amendment but... mr. Stubbe yeah so question would be is that I know in other jurisdictions there's a requirement if you're certain distance when there's liquor license and things like that, what's the requirement within the city of Papillion? Would that be an applicable type of addition to this particular section of the code? Is your question specific to the liquor license, what the notification requirement is? Yeah. It's 300 feet, isn't it? 300 feet for a liquor license. I mean, is that something that would be reasonable in this particular case? Anybody within 300 feet of the entertainment district be notified? It's my understanding there's going to be potentially live music being played from this venue if, if we ever do get an entertainment district. Um, so to me, 300 feet seems insufficient. Uh, maybe 1,000 feet? The, the neighbors that are going to be hearing this ought to be heard if they want to come and speak to the issue when it comes up, right? That's my feeling. So, Mr. Mumgarden. I, I think we're getting ahead of ourselves because an entertainment district, as I understand it, is, is similar to a zoning area, that it doesn't in and of itself do anything other than allow people to have liquor licenses in that area 
in a day and work in a different fashion. So if we create an entertainment district, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't affect anybody until a liquor license is granted there. And then we have to grant, then we have to give the same notice we would for a liquor license. So let's don't get it, let's don't treat this as if, if we adopt this ordinance, there would be an entertainment district which will immediately have a bunch of drinkers out there drinking. No, it doesn't work that way is my understanding. Uh, one point of clarification to Mr. Mumgard's point. Um, if I heard you right, you mentioned that creation of the entertainment district. Actually, we're not even doing that. All we're do what we're doing tonight is authorizing the creation of a district um, is all we're doing tonight. Then later on, somebody that wants one would have to come forward asking for the authorization for the district. And then after that, the individual establishments would have to get their liquor licenses. So multi-step. Mr. Sunday. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry, Mr. Stubbe. Yeah, I, I guess in that particular case, um, I, I personally, I think it would probably be appropriate to incorporate something in this because if somebody does come in and say, I want to have an entertainment district, it would be appropriate, I think, for them to recognize that there are requirements relative to uh, at least notifying people within a certain distance of where that district might be. And so that might give some guidance to whoever that wants to decide about creating a district. So I think I would like to propose an amendment to that particular section that instead of uh, saying separated by a street that we notify uh, any residents within 1,000 feet of the proposed entertainment district. So we have a motion to amend. Let me just repeat it to make sure we're clear for the record. A motion to amend section 8124B2 to remove separation of street and add uh, within 1,000 feet. Is there a second? Less. So we've got a second. So we've got the, I'll jump there in just a second. So we've got a second. So we can discuss it and act on it. Uh, Mr. Stubbe is, uh, has his mic on. Mr. Stubbe. Yeah, I just think 1,000 or 300 or whatever is somewhat arbitrary. And so I think maybe if we take some time to consider uh, adding something, what is the appropriate distance? I, I, there's nothing that's rushing us into doing this. Is there an opportunity for staff to evaluate and maybe come back with a recommendation. I would say one of two approaches, and I'll probably look to Mr. Gaines because he did mention probably a substitute. I would say either, well, actually probably three approaches. We could turn the amendment down, vote on what's presented, and then just have um, a future item come forward that makes the minor tweak, um, given the staff the time, but at least the entertainment district's created, and then just follow up with that distance. That'd be one option. The other one would be just to table it um, and deal with it, deal with the whole thing later. Um, the third one could be go ahead and vote on the um, on the amendment as proposed. It's either up or down, and then, then maybe there's a substitute. So I think there's multiple paths, and you end up in the same spot. Um, Mr. Gaines. Well, I think if, if it's an appropriate time, I would make a motion to table this. I agree with uh, Councilman Stubbe. I think that there is no rush in passing this right this second. I'd, I think Mr. Uh, Sunday's concerns, my concerns, his concerns, every, we can, you know, take a little bit longer and think about it. I think that's a reasonable thing to do. So I don't know if this is an appropriate time to make a motion to table it, but if it is, I'll make that motion. Probably more just of a Robert's rule. Is that an appropriate motion substitute with an amendment motion. on the floor? Substitute motion to table? Substitute motion to postpone to a future rule. Okay. I'll second that. So we have a substitute motion to postpone to a subsequent meeting. We've got a second. Um, any council discussion on the subsequent? Mr. Mumgard. I guess I just ask staff, is there any impact of doing that, uh, negative impact on anybody? Ms. Myers. Well, granted, we received the request from a developer, but certainly there's several other additional steps that this ordinance provides, and we do not have a request for an application for one. So I think a delay doesn't cause, create any problem. Mr. Jaworski. I'm just going to throw something out there. I think a thousand feet's too much. So that's so. If I don't get a chance to talk to anybody, I'm just letting it out right now. I think uh, 500 would probably be the max I would support. So just letting it, everybody know that. Mr. Stubbe. Yeah, I, I would say that if we could come back the first meeting in March, would that be doable? That would at least 
identify some opportunity for whoever has interest in maybe having this done. So, so the substitute to... motion, the second was a subsequent meeting. I'm hearing a specific clarification, which I think is always a good thing for the first meeting in March. Is that appropriate? That's okay. Appropriate. We'll take that as a friendly thing, whether it's appropriate or not. Uh, Mr. Glover. Um, do we not have a distance in our entertainment district that we've created? We don't have an entertainment district today. Um, we don't have any authorization forum. Um, what this is putting in is a process in anticipation of potentially getting one. Right. And I think a lot of people maybe look at the downtown area and think of that as an entertainment district because of what's going on, but it is not a formally designated entertainment district. So, so if we pass this or some form in the next meeting, would that include everything in our jurisdiction as far as an entertainment district or is it only it would only apply to somebody that has an area formally designated as an entertainment district and the uh, the rules around what could qualify it's got to be a pretty large area so i don't even think downtown itself would qualify as an entertain as a formal entertainment district but if but if that comes up sometime in the future and one is created is it the same it's the, the it's the same? if somebody comes forward to create an area as an entertainment district they have to follow the rules that we're putting in place now okay correct yeah, that's what i was wondering uh miss clute thank you i'm good with putting some kind of a footage on this but i just ask that we take significant consideration to what we're already asking with the liquor licenses so that we're not convoluting what we're saying one place and messing us up in another place. Um, I really feel like these have to work together. Thank you. Any other, Mr. Gaines? Yeah, just real quick, can somebody refresh my recollection on the distance for a liquor license? Was it 300? 300. 300 feet. So what, maybe this is an inappropriate time, but I, I think that maybe what's appropriate is that it's a minimum of 300 feet, and we have something in here that each case is taken on a case-by-case -case basis. So we have a chance to look at it. Some places it may be appropriate to have 300 feet. Some places may be appropriate to have 1,000 feet. But I think we limit ourselves if we just put it a specific flat number. But it, it's open for discussion the next couple uh, weeks if this passes. That's my two cents. Mr. Sunday. Remind everybody, we're only talking about giving people notice, right? So it's not, that's all we're talking about. So uh, I think it's better to err on the high side rather than on the low side, giving citizens notice about what's going on. See nobody else mics on. So we have a motion, a substitute motion on the floor to table it to a subsequent meeting, which will be the first meeting in March. It'll come back. Um, that's what we're voting on. Um, the general direction I'm hearing from the discussion is for staff to come back with the recommendation and the discussion I'm hearing is a minimum of 300, a maximum of 1,000, be sensitive to the areas and we'll use staff discretion then to figure out what that wording is and if they need to have some additional discretion written in. Does that sound fair? All right, please vote. Seven yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Item F3, resolution R200028. This is a public hearing and a vote. A resolution to approve a Class I liquor license for Miyake Sushi House, LLC. Doing business is Miyake Sushi House, 8419 South 73rd Plaza, number 105, Papillion, Nebraska. And a manager application for Ken Dong. This is a public hearing. Do we have any proponents? Is the applicant here? Thank you. You feel free to speak if you want to, but you don't have to. Um, do we have any other proponents? Do we have any opponents? Anybody against the license? Close the public hearing. Do we have a motion to approve resolution R20028? Motion by Councilman Glover, second by Councilman Gaines. Any discussion? Please vote. Seven yeas, zero nays. Motion passes, thank you. Item F4, resolution R20033, a resolution to approve participation in the Papio, Missouri River NRD multi-hazard mitigation plan. Is there a motion to approve resolution R20033? Motion. Motion by Councilman Clue. Second. Second by Councilman Stubbe. Any proponents? Opponents? Council discussion? Please vote. Seven yeas, zero nays. 
Seven yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. Item F5, resolution R200037, a resolution to approve contract modification number two to the construction management agreement between the City of Papillion and Sampson Construction Company to modify property insurance requirements for Sampson Construction. Is there a motion to approve resolution R200037? Motion. Motion by Councilman Jaworski. Second. Second by Councilman Glover. Any proponents? Opponents? Council discussion? Please vote. Seven yeas, zero nays. Motion passes. It's all the regular agenda items. Uh, committee reports. I think public facilities met tonight. Any report out from that? Mr. Mumgard. Uh, yes, the public facilities committee met tonight, and uh, the main item on our just agenda was to discuss, as listed, the possible unified refuse collection program. That's a fancy word for restricting the the garbage companies that could and could not do business in Papillion. Uh, you might recall back in December when we had uh, a number of companies come in here and get permits to conduct uh, garbage collection business in Papillion that the question was asked, why, why do we let so many companies uh, drive trucks up and down the streets every week to collect garbage? And so the committee has taken that question up. Uh, you know, the, the, our nearby neighbor, Omaha, is prim the primary example. They, they have one garbage collector collection company that does business, contracts with the city, and that's it. Uh, I understand Bellevue has one collector who has a, a permit from the city. So it's not unheard of to restrict the number of uh, businesses that can do business within the city. Uh, the goals that we talked about would be to, to reduce the number of trucks that drive on the streets and damage the streets. Um, we have a list here of uh, the number of trucks that these uh, five or six companies that currently do business, but Pillion drive across our streets every every week. Um, they cause deterioration of the streets. It also we can see that having a limited number of garbage collection companies would reduce the cost uh, through efficiency, the cost to the customers. Um, we reviewed the history. This is not the first time this has been brought up in Papillion. We reviewed the history going back to around 2001. It has been brought up once or two or three times. Uh, never got before, uh, beyond the idea of going out for, our, for a request for proposal. Uh, we didn't, uh, that uh, request at that point was turned down by the council that didn't even go out for a request for proposals. Uh, obviously, there's been a long time diverse views on the pros and cons of doing this. Um, the staff offered to us uh, quite a lot of information on uh, the pros and cons, the various options that exist in doing this. Um, we uh, passed a motion to have the staff reach out to the gar companies that do garbage collection in Papillion uh, and to the surrounding communities to get information as to how they do it, what they would do if we were uh, going out for bids and bring that committee, that information back to the committee so that we can have further discussion on whether we would recommend that the city council um, address and consider limiting the number of garbage companies that can do business and pick up residential garbage in Papillion. So you'll hear more in the future. Mr. Stubbe. Yeah, I just have a question with regard to residential being single family residential or proposing for apartment complexes or what's what's your discussion our discussion was, sim our discussion was simply for single family residential uh, trash pickup um, apartments uh, multifamily businesses uh, they operate on a different kind of a, i mean they typically have dumpsters etc shared garbage of some sort uh, so let's, uh, if we're going to put our, dip our toes into the water, let's start with residential only. Thank you. Mr. Sunday. I, I do think there was some mention of duplexes as well. I mean, some neighbors, neighborhoods have duplexes and that would be included as well. But uh, 
as as Mr. Mumgard said, the, the the goal is twofold: to create economies of scale, to get the price down, and uh, to try to help our streets last a little longer and save all the taxpayers money that way. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any comments from the floor? We got some students with us. You guys get to come up and introduce yourselves and let us know why you're here. And if you're a scout who is here that was not leading the pledge, come up and introduce yourself too and let us know what uh, troop you're with. And <laughs> come on up. We'll wait. I don't want to embarrass them, but uh, all right. My name is Evan from Troop 474. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, I'm Rachel. Whoa, that's loud. Holy crap. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm Rachel from Troop uh, Pack 461. I'm Amy. I'm Amy from um, Troop 461G. I'm Riley from 461G. I'm Kimari from Troop 461G. I'm Natalie from Troop 461G. I'm Carolyn from 461G. I'm Katie from Troop 461G. Thank you very much. And they were here for one of their merit badge requirements. Any council comments? Just a couple of things from the last couple of weeks. Uh, legislature's in session, so the United Cities have been meeting, uh, getting updates on every week what's going on in the legislature and um, are there any hearings we, we need to be aware of. We really haven't, I don't think we've gone down to the legislature and really testified on anything yet. Uh, main thing they're working on, obviously, is property tax and the incentive bill. Um, there's been a few little ones that uh, legislatures actually reached out and asked for our opinions on. Um, so the legislature's been going on. Uh, chamber's been busy. They've had some ribbon cuttings. Um, good news, Midland's Place up at 84th and 370 had a ribbon cutting, uh, a business called Mathnasium, which is a Sarpy business owner. And Shadow Lake had a ribbon cutting on the little main street for a business called Real Deals. Uh, nice thing about Real Deals is they've been a, uh, in business about five years and they wanted to relocate down to Shadow Lake. It's a local um, business, and so they wanted to locate to Shadow Lake, and uh, since being down there, they've seen their traffic double. Um, so I think it's important. People hear sometimes rumors, that, yeah, Shadow Lake's dying. Now, they've had quite a few ribbon cuttings. Obviously, we've had building permits pulled, and that was a local business that moved in down there and has seen their traffic double. Um, so I think that's a good thing. Sarpy County Economic Development had their annual meeting, thanks to everybody that showed up there. Um, Chamber's been having some legislative sessions again, and then we had a, Lori, uh, Ms. Myers and I had a good meeting with Sarpy Tourism. Um, Fred is really out trying to promote Sarpy County as a place to do business and trying to understand some of the statistics when an event comes here, how many hotel nights are being used, how much restaurants being used, and those types of things. And Fred's getting some good data around that that I think will be meaningful to us. And we're talking about some partnerships. And then um, I think for the last 15, 16 years, Papillion and La Vista have gone together in a partnership in the Senior Center and had a... Uh, a luncheon on Valentine's Day. Um, a lot of staff and elected officials served, so thank those uh, that came out. Uh, Mr. Ingberg, Mr. Glover uh, helped serve that. And for the first time in 15 years, it actually was held in Papillion at the landing. Um, and I think it was a record crowd. Um, so that was very, very nice to see. And then um, last thing, we also had an event at the landing really to thank some community partners and to show them the facility because, again, when the community center was built, one of the early, early conversations was how does this help support the civic organizations and really make it community. And so we had an event with the uh, Sarpy Chamber, the Downtown Business Association, the Papillion Community Foundation, the Midlands Community Foundation, Papillion La Vista Schools Foundation, and the Papillion 150 Committee. 
committee, uh, their directors and their executive boards, just a little bit to thank them, show them the facility and introduce them to the staff um, so we can start building that relationship. Any other council comments? Do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion, motion by Councilman Glover. Second. Second by Councilman Gaines, please vote. 78 zero nays. We are adjourned.